uh, speed the development of our PHEV technology and other technologies by doing conversions, not because we cut corners, and not because you don't do the same amount of, uh, of prototyping and testing, or in, 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 uh, ideally you do the same amount of prototyping and testing, but you're starting already with a vehicle that's been developed. So uh, there's, uh, quite frankly, fewer, fewer systems to test. Uh, still needs to be done uh, in order to, to introduce the technology. Conversions are a great way to prove the technology. Not, not so much proof of concept, that could be done on paper or in a lab, but to actually prove in the real world uh, circumstances that the technology works. And I think some of the uh, panelists here will share some of their experiences with, uh, with some conversions uh, in real world conditions. Another thing through conversions in terms of speed and some of the benefits, not just for companies, individual companies that do conversions, but for the overall marketplace, is by putting converted uh, PHEVs and other technologies out there first, we can understand first what the challenges are in broader deployment. Uh, in some senses, this is, this is great. We can kind of theorize and, and think about ways to, to solve these challenges. Uh, and in, in other uh, cases, quite frankly, it's, it's kind of painful to be the first one out there. Uh, we're the first ones to meet the regulators. And uh, that's uh, in, in, in a very cooperative spirit in which we're doing that, but there are some challenges involved there. Uh, and finally, again, as a benefit not just for individual companies doing conversions, but for the industry overall, for all of us uh, stakeholders, uh, we do push the competitive response from OEMs, and that, uh, that allows for, uh, honestly, a more robust marketplace overall. In terms of uh, where, where do you go after you've introduced the technology, what does the, the future look like? Well, uh, anybody who tries to predict the future for a living should probably pull down a second job as well, because it's a lot of food on the table getting it right. But a few things that we can point to and think about in terms of uh, the future of conversions. Uh, first of all, it's, it's, it's probably going to remain a technology game. If technology is available that is ahead of that deployed by OEMs, there should be a market for that technology in, in, in conversions. Uh, there will, we believe, be a role for greening up uh, cars in addition to perhaps tricking them out. If you go back uh, a few decades, it was all about uh, uh, aftermarket conversions to improve the horsepower and performance in, in that regard. More recently, it's been about tricking out your car in some, some very fancy ways. And I think if the technology is there and available in the aftermarket, there will be a demand for greening up of, of vehicles. So uh, that's on the technology side. I think it's, it's imperative to, to keep ahead of what is being offered in the quote unquote mainstream by the OEMs in order to keep the conversion market robust. Um, it's also a numbers game at play here in, in terms of, of the number of vehicles that conversions can apply to and the lifetime of those vehicles. I get asked a lot, well, what happens when Toyota brings out their, uh, their own PHEV? Well, that's a great question. Again, I'll defer to the fact that I can't predict the future for a living. I'm assuming I do it for a living. Uh, but those cars that are that for which our high motion conversion applies aren't going out of service. They're still going to be in somebody's hands, driven by someone for probably 10 to 15 years, if not longer. And the applicability to that vehicle doesn't change because an OEM comes out with its own technology. So as part of a numbers game, you look at the, the total number of installed base of the car that, uh, that you have conversion for and how many years it's going to be on the road. And it's actually quite a, quite a large opportunity. And then uh, finally, it's a cost game. Right now, conversions are, are, are quite expensive, and the cost may come down into the future. As people look at, uh, at conversions in the future, one of the things they're going to look at is, uh, especially as their vehicles get older, how much money do I want to put into a depreciating asset? Vehicles generally don't appreciate in value. However, we're seeing something at work, at least in the, in the near term over the last several months, that is a slight change in that dynamic. The price of Priuses, used Priuses, is actually exceeding the sticker price of new ones at the moment. So it turns out that that asset actually isn't depreciating at all. And one can ask the question, if you put a $10,000 conversion today into that Prius, will that conversion hold its value? And so if the answer to that is yes, it will, then it makes it a, a much easier decision to make. And uh, it makes the, the aftermarket conversion uh, a viable part of, of the industry into the future. And if the answer goes the other way, which it, it very well may, I, again, I don't know which way it would go, it may have other implications. So just kind of summarize uh, 
you know, con conversions are a great way to get the technology out there. Is there a future for it as a, as a continuing business model? To be seen, but there are several factors that, uh, that seem to point in, in the favorable direction. 